<laughs> What's the word, y'all? Come on, man. You know the vibes, bro. You know, I'm just the average Chicago Bulls fan. Super excited about 2021 free agency because two days in, a lot of changes have happened. Yesterday, we picked up Lonzo Bull and Alice Caruso. We got we got a new nickname because Caruso was because the Lake Show. We need something for Caruso. And now we have DeMar DeRozan. And in my mind, a DeMar DeRozan, DeMar DeRozan deal was like a sign and trade with Laurie Marketing going to to San Antonio, and I thought that was dead because San Antonio has signed Zach Collins and they signed Doug McDermott. How many tall white players do they need? They already have Lucas Shamanich. They already had Jakub Poto. But instead, they wanted they wanted Thaddeus Young in a pick. I guess two picks technically, a first round and a second rounder. DeMar DeRozan is a Chicago Bull. That is so wild to say. Starting lineup is Lonzo, Zach Levine, DeMar Patrick Williams, and Vucevic. Bro, this is as, as insane or as happy as I've been as a Bulls fan since Derrick Rose Rose's trophy. That is no exaggeration. That is no exact. Of course, we got to see it go on the court. Will it work out? <laughs> Probably. Are we a championship team? Probably not. But I made the tweet, bro. I do not care how much the tickets cost. I am courtside game one. It's going to happen. After the Lonzo Ball signing, you know, like everything I see on this channel is a flowing conversation, right? I'm just one dude with a microphone and a camera with NBA opinions. And I know it's not universal when I talk about certain things. And that, that's what makes it fun, right? There are going to be people that disagree. One of the major things that I saw from people when they were talking about Lonzo Ball and him not being a perfect fit for the Chicago Bulls is because some people believe he is an overrated playmaker. And I've even said in the past that he is, I would say, maybe an average playmaker when it comes to the half court. When you're running the break, Lonzo Ball is one of the top in the league. But in the half court offense, sometimes he's more of a 3 and D guy more than he is as a facilitator, playmaker, I'm going to run the show. Well, guess what DeMar DeRozan did over the last couple years? He became a point forward. A player that had never been known for his passing ability over the last three or so seasons in San Antonio has been their leading assistant guy. So even if Lonzo Ball, ooh, Tony Snell signed to the Portland Trailblazers, even if Lonzo Ball is a 3 and D guy in the mode of a point guard, we got DeMar DeRozan that can really set up the show. I am, I am on cloud nine, and, and mostly because I, I mentioned it in yesterday's video, I just have to keep comparison, keep, keep keep comparing my time as a Bulls fan when Gar Pax was in charge versus right now. Carney Chauvis and Mark Eversley came into the front office last offseason and didn't really do much, right? They made a wild pick when they picked up Patrick Williams at number four. And guess what? Patrick Williams turned into pretty much a stud in his rookie season. I'm really projecting that year number two is going to be even better. And that's one of the wild cards for the Chicago Bulls season. They picked up a guy that they really liked. That they, th they saw the mold of him being a really elite, a very good player uh, uh, for the Bulls in the future, right? But they let most of la uh, last season go. Like, hey, we're going to take a step back. We're going to see what we have on this team. And in that first offseason, we really going ham. And I didn't expect them to do this much. I knew we were going to get a point guard, right? I didn't know if it was going to be Lonzo Ball because I knew that Lonzo Ball was a strict free agent. I went on my podcast about a couple weeks ago. I was like, man, I wouldn't be surprised if Reggie Jackson was the guy because I know Reggie Jackson is looking for some money. The Bulls need a point guard. It might be Reggie Jackson. It might be Dennis Schroeder. No, they got their number one guy on the list. From everything I've read, everything I heard, the Bulls only wanted Lonzo Ball. Done. The Bulls wanted Alex, wanted Alex Caruso. Done. The Bulls wanted DeMar DeRozan. Done. I cannot explain to you how good it is for Chicago Bulls basketball that Lonzo Ball wanted to play here. The Bulls have never been a free agent destination. We had Carmelo Anthony pull up. We had LeBron James pull up. And they was like, nah, we're going to go to different teams. And we had to settle for Carlos Boozer. Pau Gasol was a great signing. Pa Pau Gasol might be the biggest free agent signing in Bulls history. And he ended up being, what, a two-time all-star for the Bulls. But he was already past his prime when he got here. 
And I'm not comparing Lonzo Ball to a two-time um, champion or two-time um, all-star when he got to the Bulls and Pau Gasol, but I'm just saying for this new age of Bulls fandom, this is the best we've got so far, and it is amazing. Now, I don't believe these boys are done. I legitimately do not believe these boys are done because we still have the piece of Laurie marketing, and what I am hoping... If we aren't bringing Laurie Marketing back, at this point, I wouldn't be opposed to bringing Laurie Marketing back. I know I've been trolling on Twitter saying like, oh, so they won't, don't want Laurie. Oh, they won't, don't want Laurie. Um, I've gained 3,000 followers on Twitter alone yesterday just for me tweeting and memeing about free agency, by the way. Um, I wouldn't be opposed to bringing Laurie Marketing back because now he would have such a strict role that I wouldn't hate him on the team. I mean, I, I didn't hate him on the team beforehand. But if we were going to do a sign and trade with Laurie Marketing, I, I think... I think we need to go for two solid bench players. They can be seventh, eighth man in the rotation type dudes. And I am happy. I am ready. Lonzo Ball, Kobe White, and Ayo DeSumo. Come on, Ayo. Let's go, baby. You, you go get he might not get a lot of PT his rookie season. But we let Ryan Archie the no walk, so maybe he gets some some throw-in minutes here and there. We're gonna have Zach Levine and Kobe White as a combo at the backup two. We still have Troy Brown Jr. I, I, I am in love with what this team is turning into right now. And again, I don't think they are done. I don't think they are done. I think the Chicago Bulls still have deals to be done. And what's super crazy, um, spoiler, I'm going to tell y'all this right now. The call game show with me sitting down with athletes and stuff is pretty much all but dead. Um, and we'll talk about that in the future. But one of the people that I got offered to come onto my show, which we definitely got to do now. Even if you, even it's not the called game show, it's just Kenny talking to people. It's Mark Eversley, the, the Chicago Bulls general manager. And when it was posed to me that he can come on the show, I told them, wait, I wanted to wait. And now with free agency doing what it, I have to talk to this man because I need to know what these last 24 to 48 hours really been like. Because I know these boys ain't getting no sleep. DeMar DeRozan had been linked to the Bulls for like, what, 12 hours now. And they were just trying to figure it out. And it turned out to be Thaddeus Young, who he just pretty much guaranteed his contract, thinking he was going to be back. A first-round pick and a second. There has to be something said about us giving up basically three first-round picks to build this team. I don't really care about those picks anymore. Um, um, and... and so far in the drafting process for this front office, I haven't been disappointed. I mean, Patrick Williams, again, was pretty good his rookie season. Io, we'll see what he's on. And we got Market Marcos S. I don't know how to pronounce his name yet. We drafted in the second round last year. He'll coming over. I'm not opposed to giving up first-round picks to have a competent, fun, competitive team. Because convincing the Bulls, hey, we just signed Lonzo Ball and Alice Caruso. We might be a playoff team. Which means that our pick might be what? Between 13 and 18 if we make it. We draft somewhere in there. Or we can use that pick. And we go get a guy in DeMar DeRozan. Who had been one of the most underrated players in the league for the last couple years. Because he's in San Antonio. Nobody's watching San Antonio instead of San Antonio fans. I'm sorry. It's just a fact. San Antonio fans will tell you how good and how important DeMar DeRozan had been to their organization in the last couple years. It's just a fact. They're going to a different movement. You see they're going more youth than anything. And we have a guy... By all accounts that people love to play with, Vucevic and DeMar DeRozan are back together. I forgot about that play. They're back together. Just like the old days. Were they dorm room roommates? Possibly. I don't know. Um, let's quickly talk about let's quickly talk about the Lakers. Why why it's on my mind. They got Malik Monk. Um, they got Carmelo Anthony. And I, I'm I'm seeing people call it a super team. I cannot say that is the case. Is the team good? Yes, for sure they're good. <laughs> Come on, man. They, of course they're good. Okay, okay, more tweets. DeMar DeRozan's deal is a fully guaranteed $85 million over the next three years. Thad Young and Alfred Camino. I'm cool with that. Alfred Camino, no nothing. Um, it owns a pick earlier. They can convey as 2024. Top three protected in 2024. Um, that low-key... That's a very good return for the San Antonio Spurs. Shout out to the Spurs, bro. For a guy that could have just walked the free agency for you to get a top three protected pick in three years, pretty good. Pretty good. Um, good luck with that. Same thing I said to the Orlando Magic when we gave them our picks for Vucevic. Very, I'm wishing y'all nothing but the luck for y'all to be back on top eventually. Back to the Lakers. Back to the Lakers. 
That team is old, old, bro. That team is old. Alex Caruso is one of their best defenders. Say what you want about Kyle Kuzma. He had turned into a decent defender throughout his years in L.A. Some of the pieces that made them one of the top defenses in the league is gone now, and they are relying heavily on the veteran leadership and the veteran play of a lot of these guys. A majority of the people they are signing right now are past their prime. Melo is still good, don't get me wrong, but he's past his prime. Them signing Melo does not make them a super team, in my personal opinion. They're going to be a good team. They're a championship contender. But when I hear the word super team, I'm thinking about players that are in their prime. And they're no doubt going to win their conference barring injury. And that's kind of what I thought about the Brooklyn Nets. If the Brooklyn Nets didn't get injured, they probably win their conference. If the Lakers don't win their conference next season, I'm not out here super surprised. So that's why, to me, they're not a super team. They're one of the better teams in the league. But I don't think they're a super team with that signing. It's Melo. Shout out to Melo. The, whoever Melo's um, social media team has killed it. The turning the Melo to the, the L in the Melo to a Lakers logo, fire. Absolutely fire. So shout out to him. Chicago Bulls. I'm excited. I don't want to be disappointed, y'all. <laughs> oh, it would be just my luck. I shouldn't I should get my expectations too high for this team. Because all I know is disappointment as a Bulls fan. It's just a fact. The new regime got me got me eyes open and woeful. It's probably not a good thing. For the time being, I'm excited. I'm texting my people at the Bulls. I'm trying to get in the locker room soon. Oh, yeah. Oh, don't be surprised when this channel is no longer called Called Game. Um, it'll probably go back to Kenny for real, which I enjoyed a little bit more anyway.